Do narcissists have preferences? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. You may have wondered about the preferences of the narcissist. Commonly, this arises in the context of where you have been in a relationship with somebody and it's all gone horribly wrong. They got rid of you, they disengaged from you, and you may well have learned thereafter that this person is a narcissist, and they went off with somebody else. In fact, they seem to move with undue haste onto the next person that caused you to suspect, and probably rightly so, that there was something already going on between this person and the narcissist when you were in a relationship with them. You look on this person and think, hmm, they're exactly like me. Similar coloured hair, similar body shape. They have a similar job to the one that I have. It's almost like a facsimile of me. In other instances, you may look at your replacement and think, ooh, he, she's downgraded there. What's that all about? The person's nothing like me. I'm better looking than they are. I've got a better job. I'm more intelligent than that person. Why have they gone for that individual? Now, I've explained elsewhere about why the narcissist downgrades. But is it the case that a narcissist has a preference? Well, there are, in a way, several answers to this. First of all, narcissists do indeed have preferences when it comes to appliances, namely people. Narcissists have preferences there because narcissists generally prefer to ensnare empathic individuals as their intimate partner primary sources because those individuals are the ones that are easiest to ensnare and the easiest to keep ensnared. They are invariably found in with fuel and the relevant residual benefits and character traits that come with them, whilst they might not be as fulsome perhaps as another individual, the fact that they can be ensnared and kept ensnared so readily proves to be hugely important. The narcissist also has preferences with regard to the type of cadre that they are, with regard to whether they're somatic, cerebral, elite or victim. And if you'd like to understand more about what those preferences are, then you ought to read my book, Sitting Target. You can obtain that on Amazon or from the Knowledge Vault. Link in the video description. Accordingly, when it comes to ensnaring people, particularly those of an intimate nature, but it's also just as applicable to non-intimate appliances, family and friends, the narcissist does have preferences as to the type of target that they will go after. It all links back to fulfilling the prime aims. Therefore, the narcissist, either subconsciously or aware, seeks out the person that is the easiest to control, the easiest to keep controlled, but also has a fulsome fuel provision along with excellent character traits and residual benefits. There's somebody who might not be that easy to control but provides lots of fuel character traits and residual benefits might not make it to being the intimate partner primary source. They might remain an intimate partner secondary source. Somebody who is really easy to control but doesn't have that good character traits or residual benefits might find themselves as a non-intimate secondary source. The fact is, the narcissist does have preferences in that regard. But that's in relation to other people, to appliances. What about inherent preferences of the narcissist themselves? For instance, does the narcissist prefer to drink Coca-Cola or Pepsi? What's their favourite kind of cheese? Do they like a nice slice of mature cheddar or a more camembert kind of person? What are their preferences in terms of colours? What do they like music-wise? Does the narcissist have any preferences in that regard? The answer to that is yes and no. The narcissist will have preferences for themselves. So, for example, a narcissist may prefer raspberry jam over strawberry jam. Thus, when that narcissist is sat on his own or her own, 
and the toaster pops, and they smear on the butter, and they select the jam. They go for raspberry jam. Why? Because they like the taste of it. Why? Because the way that their taste receptors and also their smell receptors have been aligned is that their brain finds those flavours and scents more appealing in relation to raspberry jam than strawberry jam. It's got nothing to do with control. It's got nothing to do with fuel, character traits or residual benefits. Why? Because there's no appliance involved. It's the narcissist and the jam. The narcissist may prefer that their clothing smells of fresh linen rather than lavender. Why? Because again, those receptors in their nose find that smell more appealing. The narcissist may not like chocolate cake because the taste receptors find it too cloying, too sickly, therefore doesn't eat it. Thus, the narcissist will have preferences. For example, I support Manchester City. I don't support Manchester United. I prefer to eat mature cheddar. I don't like mild cheese. Those are preferences based upon the way that my brain prefers as a consequence of what it provides to me. Namely, I find the football of Manchester City more rewarding and I find the taste of mature cheddar preferable because my taste buds find that taste more agreeable than that of mild cheddar. However, where the situation becomes complicated is with regard to the manifestation of those preferences to appliances. Accordingly, if I deem it appropriate to tell somebody that I enjoy mature cheddar for the purposes of controlling them and drawing fuel from them, I will do so. It might be, for instance, that in seducing somebody, they make me a sandwich. And they make me a sandwich which utilises mild cheddar. It's not so disgusting as to me want to spit it out, but I would have preferred that they would have made it with mature cheddar. But this person is painted white, and therefore I thank them for the sandwich and say it tasted delicious. Why? Because I deem that is what is appropriate for the purpose of asserting control over that particular person. It wasn't distasteful, but it wasn't delicious. But I lie and say that it was delicious in order to please them, because I'm seducing them. Thus, my preference has been altered temporarily for the purposes of the assertion of control and drawing of fuel from that individual. In some instances, it might be that there's a particular taste that I really don't like. So let's say, for instance, I really don't like chocolate cake. But an appliance that is painted white offers me some. I might initially politely decline and make an excuse as to, oh, I'm watching my figure, or I've just eaten, I'm not particularly hungry. But they look upset that I've declined it, and therefore that threatens my need for control. Therefore, in order to bring them back under control, I say, OK, I'll just have a little slice. And I force it down. I say, oh, that sliver's enough, honestly. It's delicious. Mmm, so moist. Actually, so rich, I don't think I could eat any more. But thank you, that's really lovely. Again, I'm lying. But the lie is being told to enable me to control that person, to get fuel from them, to further the ensnarement. An unaware narcissist behaves in a similar way, just they don't know that they're telling the lie. The narcissism shapes their response for the purposes of the prime aims. Of course, when that person becomes painted black and they offer me chocolate cake, I will be more vociferous in my rejection of it. Good God, no. Why are you foisting that on me? You know I can't stand chocolate cake. That just demonstrates how you don't care about me. Thus I reject it. They get upset, but I don't care. Their negative fuel is what I'm after. Thus, a narcissist will have preferences. A narcissist will have preferences in relation to inanimate aspects of life. The taste of food, the feel of fabric, the type of car, the type of house. 
leaving aside the issue of other appliances, the type of phone, the type of computer, the type of music, etc., all of those things will be selected by the narcissist because their senses interpret the receipt of the information from those relevant inanimate objects in a particular way, which finds favour with the narcissist or doesn't find favour with them. Thus, the narcissist prefers strawberry jam, doesn't like marmalade. The narcissist prefers mint choc chip ice cream, doesn't want to eat strawberry ice cream, and so on and so forth. But all of that gets thrown up in the air, if you will, when it comes to an interaction with a person. Here is where the elasticity is demonstrated, where the chameleon-like nature of the narcissist appears, so that the, on their own preference, if I can call it that, is open for change. That it's not actually set in stone. In order to get to the prime aims, the narcissist may well like something that they genuinely like. The narcissist may like something that they don't actually like, but they pretend to do so to get to the prime aims. They might enthuse about something that they're fairly disinterested in. And what you're witnessing, of course, is once again the application of the truth, the half-truth, and nowhere near the truth. The prime aims are everything when it comes to the interaction with another person. And therefore, if the acquisition of the prime aims means that the narcissist utilizes the truth, for instance, he really likes mature cheddar, he therefore speaks enthusiastically about the mature cheddar sandwich in order to get control over the relevant appliance that has made the sandwich for him and to draw fuel from them. If he doesn't like mature cheddar sandwich, he may well pre he will pretend to do so because that person's painted white. So he therefore lies. It's nowhere near the truth. On another occasion, he can use his dislike of mature cheddar sandwich and tell the truth because he's devaluing that individual. So a narcissist has preferences in relation to the target, which are explained more fully in my book, Sitting Target. The narcissist has preferences when they are on their own and not interacting with someone as a consequence of the way that their senses are configured and then they have the preferences based upon necessity linked to the prime aims which means the existing preferences might be used or they could be changed in order to get to the prime aims Sometimes the narcissist's preferences are more consistent. Other times, they shift. Take, for example, Boris Johnson. If you look at his political career, he doesn't really stand for anything. He has no preferences when it comes to dealing with the electorate. He simply chooses the ones that his narcissism deems are the most appropriate for the purposes of control. And he can shift position readily like the wind changing direction. Many narcissists behave in a similar way, either consciously or subconsciously, whereby there are no fixed views, no fixed likes, because anything can change for the purposes of the pursuit of the prime aims. Some narcissists may be more consistent in the application of these preferences. Others, for instance, you might get a narcissist that regularly changes their football team, dependent on who they're talking to. Other narcissists will be more consistent, showing what would be perceived as loyalty. But what you mustn't lose sight of is the fact that no matter what preference that a narcissist has as a consequence of the configurement of their senses, that preference can be set to one side, turned around, objected to the opposite utilised when it comes to the prime aims, because the pursuit of the prime aims always supersedes those preferences. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.